Welcome back to another episode of Automotive Insight. Made in America, but not made for TV. Today we have a 2018 Jeep Compass with a 2.4 liter. The customer states that they have to jump off the car every morning. They've installed a new battery. They have not replaced the auxiliary battery. So something is draining it down. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to prep the vehicle to do a parasitic draw test um, with the keyless uh, remotes. You want to get it away from the vehicle because that can help keep computers alive. Um, also, I know we got the hood up. This has a hood switch by itself. Sometimes they're built into the latch. You'll make sure all your doors are closed. Um, so that way the, the car thinks it needs to go to sleep. So um, you want to do that because if the car is not trying to go to sleep, you're obviously going to and give you a bad uh, amperage draw reading. This is a auto stop or a start stop vehicle. Uh, the auxiliary battery is an extra battery to help run interior stuff um, because of uh, the excessive starting and stopping uh, from the engine. Okay, so we have our, our auxiliary battery isolated. I just took off the negative cable. Um, our auxiliary battery is at 8.7 volts. Um, it's supposed to be. 12.7 or equivalent to what the main one is because they can charge and discharge from each other. We're going to run a parasitic draw test on the car. Um, we're going to disconnect it from the battery right here and then we're going to hook our meter in line with the battery to see what kind of draw it is. You got to be careful of this because a high amperage draw can blow the fuse in your meter or you can have uh, an amp clamp uh, but I do recommend using the multimeter function because it can get a lot more accurate. So we're going to take off the 10 millimeter here, the battery. Just some alligator Bit my hand off. clamps. The one at the battery goes to your negative because that's the way electricity flows. Red one goes to the cable. So right now we're at almost one amp, um, which is can be a little bit normal because you basically just connected the battery. So uh, to get a true uh, parasitic draw reading, you want to let it sit. 30 minutes, sometimes you gotta do an hour. Alright, so it's been 30 minutes. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna disconnect the auxiliary battery. Um, the auxiliary battery is assumed to be bad. And so now we're at about seven, six milliamps, which is normal. Um, you're like, why does that, why is an auxiliary battery draining the main battery? Well, it takes energy to store energy. So a battery is also a load. So if you have a better battery, the, the bad one can draw off of it. So um, our auxiliary battery is our excessive draw at this point. Uh, and it is time to replace it. It's about five years old. Okay, so we're going to start working on removing our auxiliary battery. Um, you've already got your cable disconnected. That's a 10 millimeter. Uh, the auxiliary battery is right beside the main one. They decided not to hide it in the vehicle somewhere. Uh, the main hold down is 13 millimeter. You know, I'm going to remove this black box up here. It's probably some kind of distribution box. yeah distribution box or some kind of amp meter of some sort for they like to regulate the charging on stuff. But 10 millimeters there, and then the positive is also a 10 millimeter. Studs are an E6. All right, 
positive side had two cables on it. The flat square went on the bottom. And then the one with the, the two edges went on top. All right, we're going to put our battery clamp on first before doing our negative battery cable because you're still messing with grounds and the brackets are metal. Your 13 millimeter nut. Put the mystery box back on. All right, so we got everything back together and we're doing the same test. We have, have our meter set for a parasitic draw and we're only showing about, uh, about four milliamps, which is good, 40 milliamps. So um, that's where, that's a lot better than what it was. Um, we also ran into the scenario that our main battery was slightly discharged. So we let it run for a few minutes so the batteries could help to equalize. So uh, we ran the test again. Uh, so this con is confirming that our, uh, our auxiliary battery was draining our main battery down. So our main battery probably still isn't quite fully charged. So it is probably still pulling a little bit from the auxiliary battery to maybe equalize even better. So after uh, you could put a battery charger on it, um, you could probably drive it for about 30 minutes um to help to help the battery uh but still this is a whole lot better than with the old battery in it so we swap put our leads back to, to test bolts and put our meter back on the voltage setting uh trying to check voltage in the amp setting blows your fuse so um but we're going to check to make sure both batteries are being charged the main one's got 13 7 that's good and the auxiliary 13.8, that's good too. So. The warning message is usually up here. It's, uh, it's usually an A with an arrow wrapped around it. So the warning, the warning message is gone and the orange uh, warning, the A with the arrow wrapped around it is gone. Uh, so that shows that the auxiliary battery was also preventing the auto stop start. Well, that's going to wrap up the battery. The only thing we got left to do is the hard process of putting the radio stations back in. Sometimes uh, manufacturers are a little more friendly on that. They memorize it. Sometimes it's not. I've been accused of changing people's radio stations because of it. But we didn't have any fancy equipment, just a good voltmeter to diagnosis. We didn't even hook up to the computer. Normally, I would like to scan it just to kind of cover your basis but this was done basic hand tools and basic knowledge of automotive electronics so if you like what you saw today you know like share subscribe thanks for watching took two minutes just to do that huh yeah <laughs>